My name is Eli. My name is Jason. My name is Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are so glad you are here with us tonight. We know your time is very important, so we'll make this as easy and understandable as possible. Yes, and we are glad that you are here. We are all kind of huddled up together as a family, and we are your family, and you are our family, and I think that might have been the same thing, but we're <laughs> all family together, and we do appreciate your time, and so let's begin. And one thing we wanted to go over is we wanted to go over a comment of Emissary of Elohim's because I want to be as exact as we can possibly be. I think, and what I was discussing with my boys tonight, I think it would be amazing if we just get a note, like a blank notepad, and every day one of us take a verse starting in the beginning of the Torah and write it all the way to the end. And Cade says, hey, we're not kings. But I'm like, yes, wouldn't it be as cool to be as wise as kings and be able to write that out? I mean, it might take us a lifetime to do that, but I thought it was cool. But anyway, going back to this, Emissary of Elohim was talking right here. Um, where is it, Jade? Uh, the start of the top. So 28? Right. There. Oh, okay, there he goes. So he goes, technically, you can consider the charge to go and sojourn in the land as a command and to guard his commands as an implied charge when Abraham's obedience was reminded. So let's go over there and let's read that. Okay. It is Genesis 28, 13 through 15. No, through four first. Do four. four. Thanks, Nicole. Okay, so we are starting in four. And give you the Barak of Abraham to you and your seed with you, so that you inherit the land of your sojournings, which Elohim gave you, which Elohim gave to Abraham. Okay, so is there anything more on that, or is that... That's all it says. So it says essentially that we... What is, what is the exact command? Oh, hi, Sarah. Hey, this is a good time to uh, mention to everybody as we go into airplane mode that um, we do have a Telegram channel, and it is, is for youth. And um, it's actually for everybody, probably, but it's mostly for youth. We're trying to set this up for youth. And so if you guys will post the link inside of the description, and, um, yeah, if you want to go to that, you can. So let's go going back to this. What... Sojourn in the land. Is this a command? Um, is this a says, command for us? I can't say it's for us because right now we are not a we are not Israel. We are not. We are Israel. What do you mean you're not Israel. We are not a full tribe. We are, we're not a full tribe. We're not a full tribe. We are spread out. Right. Because Yisrael was like all the people, and they were gonna. They were supposed to. A whole of them were supposed to take out the the Canaanites. So in the end days, it says all of us are spread out. We are all mixed amongst the nations, which it seems like we are, because a lot of us are, are awakening people in Canada, people in South Africa, people uh, in Germany. We have, we have people like all over the place. Um, okay, so I'm trying to figure out, trying to get to the bottom of this. Nicole, can you help us out on this? Is, I don't know. Is, I have no idea, unless maybe later on there's a commandment or something, because he says so, in, if you read all of his comments on that, then... Mm -hmm. Maybe okay, so let's go. 28, 13 through 15 has similar connotations to guard the charge of receiving the promise of the inheritance, a charge we all hold. Kingdom come, hallelujah. When we are in the good land, hallelujah. And which, which is true. I mean, we are called over to well, like Mount Zion. I don't know so much as it's going to be in Yisrael, but I mean, it'll be on the mountaintop, which is, the, is what I believe is the kingdom to, kingdom to come. So are we supposed to go to Yashrael, Yisrael right now, I guess is, is the question. And so um, it certainly was a command to go up and take the land after Yashrael crossed the Yardin. Then at the end of 28, this vow became law later, a personal covenant that became a nation covenant. So <clears throat> here's the thing. I don't think, I think if we decide this is a command and we decide we're going to take up armament or we're going to go over there right now, like us being uh, goys, like non-Jewish, we can't just go to Yisrael, um, especially with the Cobra commander in charge of things right now. Yeah, the, right? Uh, two-thirds have to die, right? Something like that. Um, the Bible, the Bible speaks that the land of Israel is completely annihilated. Like it is like the, the evil is taken out of there. And when you look at the land of Israel right now, it is, is full of abortions. It's full of the same abominations that, that North America and every other country is. So, I mean, it's just the, the abominations are all over the place. So, um, I, I don't see this as, I mean, if it is a command, we're going to get in a lot of trouble right here trying to do this. Um, because I believe there's a second exodus where we will all be called, where we oh, will yes. know yeah, I mean, and I don't know so much. I, I, I don't think they're going to put us a mixed in the middle of all these. Um, it would be like us. They're, they're all foreigners. Even though they call themselves Jews, they are all like 
Turks and they are not keeping the law, statutes, and commands. So for them to be real Jews or real people of Israel, they would have to keep the law, statutes, and commands. And, and number one, you would not be able to bleed the babies out on the ground. Right, land needs cleansed. Yeah, the land, the land needs completely cleansed. It's, it's totally filthy right now. So I, I don't see this as a commitment. Maybe, maybe later or something we should do this, but I, I don't see it. Anyone else on oh, this? No. All right. All right, so I just want to be very thorough on this, and um, that's the dog bowl scooting around here. All right, so let's begin right here. <clears throat> I guess since we are here, we um, I, I won't read through 14 again, but the last one that we just barely did, which is commandment 15, was remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. And so we are continuing on, and before we continue on, does anybody want to give a recap of where we are? Because it's been a couple days since we've been had the ability to congregate around and do this. Where are we at to Exodus 4? Exodus 3, we were uh, Moshe, so Yethro. So we start in uh, Exodus, we basically have, uh, after uh, Jacob and his family, Yaakov and his family, all moved down there 400 years later, Pharaohs forgot who Yosef, Joseph was. They forgot that he was side by side with Pharaoh working there. He thought his family was like family with him. And they started, they were scared of them and decided they were going to rule over them. So, and then they decided to enslave them because they were scared of how big they'd become and how big of a nation they were growing to be. And so they started killing all the male children so they could not rise up. And then uh, one of the mothers of one of the Hebrews of Levi, Moshe's mother, uh, she put him in a little tiny basket she created and uh, flew him down the river. And Pharaoh's daughter found him and adopted him. And yeah. then, then he ended up uh, he ended growing up, up uh, under his mom for a little bit. And then he moved back to his other mom. And he ended up uh, seeing people fighting of his own people, uh, the Egyptians beating up his people, and he ended up killing the Egyptian. Then he uh, fled because he fl fled from the land because he saw people uh, fighting amongst people and they knew what he did. And now he is with talking to Yahuwah in the burning bush. Right, and this is, there was like 40 years or something that had passed from the time that he was um, left Egypt and was getting back to getting back. So, all right, so let's begin Exodus uh, 4. <clears throat> and <clears throat> my voice is a little raspy. It's just how it is. <clears throat> and Moshe answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, Yahuwah has not appeared unto you. And Yahuwah said unto him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moshe fled from before it. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Put forth your hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that Yahuwah Elohai of their fathers, the Elohai of Avram, the Elohai of Yitchak, and the Elohai of Yaakov, has appeared unto you. And Yahuwah said furthermore unto him, Put now your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put your hand into your bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe you, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass. If they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto your voice, that you shall take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which you take out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moshe said unto El Yahuwah, O Adonai, I am not eloquent, neither here, heretofore, nor since you have spoken unto your servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. All right, so real quick, gentlemen, um, we, unless we knew the extracurricular books, we wouldn't know why Moshe was slow to speak. Why do you have slow tongue? Anyone? So basically when he was really small in Pharaoh's castle, right, in Pharaoh's palace with, with all the servants, they were eating and they were sitting around the table. And he sat next to Pharaoh as because that he was the, son, the grandson of Pharaoh, Not right? the grandson, yeah. So he, as a child, grabs the crown. I think he's like four or five. It was really young. It was super young. And he grabs the crown off Pharaoh's head and puts it on his head. Now, they took that as a sign that this kid was going to rule over them, that this kid was going to. They thought he was extremely intelligent, right? He's going to kill all of them and become the king. So they're like, well, what do we do with this kid? Do we kill him? Like, no, we can't kill him. This is my da daughter's son. This is who she loves. So basically, they put a test up for him and said, if he grabs a shiny pearl rock, 
then he is intelligent. But if he grabs this burning coal out of my hand, then he is the, he is just a normal kid, and he just grabbed it because it was shiny, right? So this messenger, the an angel, like help basically takes Moses' hand and puts on the coal, and he ate it and put it in his mouth, even though he wasn't supposed to. He put it in his mouth, and it basically like burned his tongue and burned like his throat and stuff. So he has like a basically a speech impediment for the rest of his life. Yeah. So they presented with him with a, a either a pearl or a burning coal, and as because the because Yah was protecting him, the angel basically just <laughs> had Moshe owned for a long time. He was he was probably really burned, and I mean it was burned enough that it it messed his his speech up and his tongue. So that was probably a problem. So anyway, verse 11. And Yahuwah said unto him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the dumb? Or deaf? Or the seen? Or the blind? Have not I, Yahuwah? Now therefore go, and I will be your mouth, and teach you what to say. And he said, O Adonai, send, I pray you, by the hand of him who you will send. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Moshe, and he said, Is not Aaron the Leve, Leve your brother? I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he comes forth to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. So, um, it's interesting the conversation that, that Moshe has. That you know he can actually talk, and um, you know Moshe was considered a, a very good friend of Yah. And a, you know this is this is very interesting that you can carry on conversations with him, like you can. He, he guides you a certain way and you, you talk back and it, it makes makes Yah angry. And so um, <clears throat> it's, it's interesting to see the communication that we can have with, with our creator and to know that he would walk with us and talk with us to this kind of degree. And I, I believe he still will if we are willing to listen and speak. Okay, and so uh, he's heading out to see his uh, homeboy, his brother, Aaron, the, the Levite. Verse 15, And you shall speak unto him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth. And with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be your spokesman unto the people, and he shall be. Even he shall be to you instead of a mouth, and you shall be to him instead of Elohim. Okay, what does that mean? Anyone catch up? What does that say in your translation? Cause that so, and he shall speak for you to the people, and it shall be that he shall be a mouth for you, and you shall be an Elohim for him. So basically so, he becomes a puppet. Basically, he becomes like. Uh, why would they? Why would why would Yahuwah Elohim Most High say that he's going to be a, an Elohim? He's going to bestow him with power, right? He's going to see him as like extremely powerful in his eyes. And another name for Elohim was be mighty ones, like he is a powerful person now. So, what do we know of that are considered Elohim in the in the Bible? Uh, the false gods. We have false, false gods. God. Man we is considered man, man, like powerful men, right? Powerful men are considered to be an Elohim. Messengers, but it's lower case. Messengers can be Elohim. Right? Elohim. Right. And so um, when we're looking at this, it's Elohim, and then it says, when bold, specific, specifically used, and the plural, thus, especially with the article of the supreme Elohim, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Right, and, and Elohim is not his name, it's just a, it's a title. Right, that's, Elohim is also a title, right? It is, it is a, um, just like, you know, God is a title, it's a pagan title, but it's, it's what they mean. Okay, verse 17. And you shall take this rod in your hand, wherewith you shall do signs. And Moshe went and returned to Yithro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray you, and return unto my brethren, which are in Mitzrayim, and see whether they be yet alive. And Yithro said to Moshe, Go in peace. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe in Midian, Go, return into Mitzrayim, for all the men are dead which sought your life. And Moshe took his woman and his sons and set them up on his donkey, and he returned to the land of Mitzrayim, and Moshe took the rod of Elohim in his hand. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, when you go to return into Mitzrayim, see that you do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in your hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And you shall say unto Pharaoh, Thus says Yahuwah, Yashrael is my son, even my firstborn. All right, so real quick, um, this almost doesn't seem like a fair fight. It seems like Pharaoh is, uh, is burned for the sake of... Um, uh, an example. Yeah, he became an example. An extreme example. And this is the pharaoh that was like 18 inches tall or something, right? Yeah, he was and like... Jasher talks about yeah, Jasher. Jasher. Like, he was like, like literally a gnome. They said he was ugly, he was short, his beard reached <laughs> like so Like Fauci. 
Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have said that. Sorry. I, sorry. No jokes. No jokes. Sorry. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Okay. Anyway, so, Kate's looking at me. Right. So he's 18 inches of yeah, dwarf, it's like, it's like, like a gnome or something. He's completely short, right? But he was smarter than his older brother, right? His brother was a foolish. He was fast to speak. He didn't listen. And his father did not, not see king's worthiness of him, so he chose his short son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The reason we're chuckling here is the other day there was a meme that was going around real quick, and it was Anthony Fauci on a ladder. And he was literally, like, at the tall, at the height of a ladder, he was barely the same level as a human being. Probably the size of Pharaoh. <laughs> it just looks just like Pharaoh. So anyway, that was it. Inside joke. Now you all know it. <clears throat> all right, where are we at, Nicole? Okay. And I say unto you, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son, even your firstborn. And it came to pass, by the way, in the end, that Yahuwah met him and sought to kill him. Okay, so what, what's, anyone have any uh, story on this? So, something about circumstances here, I don't quite remember, but something oh, happened. They were, they were, they were getting it cursed. Goes down, it goes down, we read down and we uh, find out why. Uh, no. All right, Nicole just tells us to be patient. I think something happened like uh, in Jasher where it talks about like how he was getting afflicted because, okay. because of what happens next. 25. Then Zephora, Zephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and she said, surely a bloody man are you to me. <laughs> she didn't want him circumcised. She didn't? Is this kid like... First, when he was first born. Okay. Zephora didn't want the razor? Zephora didn't want but Moshe probably was like, hey, eight days old. But he didn't obey, so y'all was sitting there afflicting him all okay. this time for this. And he's like, I'm just... She opposed it. And how do we know this? Just Jasher? Yeah, I think it's Jasher. But mine right here has a thing that says, now apparently he failed to circumcise one of his sons, his wife being opposed to it, but seeing his life as in such as a danger. Hey, she went from cook to surgeon. Fast. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> That's, uh, I guess you would know how to do that You're back in the day. There's no doctors or any of that, Jive. So. You were your own doctor. You were your own doctor. We are like we are now. Okay. Um, so here, so she saved the day. <laughs> so he, verse 26, so he let him go. Then she said, a bloody man you are because of the circumcision. And Yahuwah said to El Aron, go into the wilderness to meet Moshe. And he went and met him in the Mount of Elion. And Elohim, excuse me, and kissed him. And Moshe told Aaron all the words of Yahuwah who had, who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moshe and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Yashrael. And Aaron spoke all the words which Yahuwah had spoken to Moshe and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that Yahuwah had visited the children of Yashrael, that they had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshiped. <clears throat> so Moshe went and did a whole bunch of like amazing tricks. Uh, check out my snake. Check out this app. He's Look like, at my hand. All right, everybody, put your hand in your cloak. Everyone out. Everyone like faints. <laughs> Dude, if my hand turned like levers, I'd be like, hey man. Well, I mean, that's the scary thing, right? You, you you see a snake, and you know snakes. Well, not all snakes, but most snakes are like scary, right? Most snakes are like. Uh, I think they're all scary. Just something that look gentle. What? <laughs> like what not, snakes not, not in this country. Like <laughs> you've been a pet coat before. I, pet coat? I've never seen a gentle snake, kid. <laughs> <laughs> nice snakes and pet coat. It doesn't look gentle to you. Does somebody yeah, think this, that looks like this, a gentleman? There was this old man that was like uh, from a church back when we were Christians and stuff, and he would he bring reptiles and stuff. And he had an iguana, a giant iguana, he had a snake, and they wrap around you and they all like hug you and stuff. They not choke you out, but they're like super nice. You could have a pet. I, I remember Sunshine, the giant snake, and the handler yeah, start crying he, when yeah. the snake died. That was, was, awful. was super sad. All right, snake. <clears throat> we're going anyways, off the thing. Anyways, so. uh, yeah, it's a scary thing to grab a snake, right? You like have to pick up a snake. And like, wow, this dude's crazy, and it turns back to a stick. Like, I'm wow. sure this is some not just some like cool look. I'm sure this is like a viper, some He's evil like, viper. Yeah, no, this is probably some some crazy stuff. All right, do we have any commands? No, no, nothing. All right, let's just remember circumcise your kids eight days. Yeah, remember, just have your kids circumcised eight days, so the angel of death doesn't come <laughs> and get you. I think I think who punishes you if you know. The more you know, the more you'll be punished for it. That puts us in a very, very bad, bad spot. spot. Yeah. yeah, I mean it, that's. I mean a bad spot if we're not following it, right? If we're like if we're like sin, doing against disobeying, no. sinning. Yes. So if we if we sin within these guidelines and yeah. actively know that because we are sinning, because if you don't know that you're supposed to circumcise your kid, you really can't be punished for the law. You don't know if you don't. Oh, know. whoa! How do you know that? Well, the Christians most ever says everyone will get a chance to know. Well, it will, okay, I get it. Yes, that is true. All right, I rest my case. All right. <laughs> Exodus 5 1. Like, like they can't say, I'm a sign. No, there's going to be a chance where they heard about the law. Someone said, they read the form about the law. 
there was some chance everyone would get the chance. I, I think Messiah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, it, it. I mean, I don't think like five year old kid that, like, because I didn't hear the word Torah or law until I was like, what, 12? Right. 11, 12? All right. Yeah. Do you, I don't know. It's going to be hard. 10, 10. I, hey, uh, the good news is we don't have to be judging. <laughs> yeah. That's not our job. None of us. In, in, That's honestly the hardest job ever is like figure out who's good, who's bad, how do you judge this person, how do you not judge this person. That's a really hard job to do. Well, you know, the crazy thing is over on YouTube, over day after day after day, it's the people with the pork, and that is such a hot topic. Yeah, yeah, and they've been told not to eat the pork, and they know. And so when they know, will they get cursed more? Well, they'll rip rip out the the verse that, that, oh, Jesus made all food cling. Yeah, that's not going to say Well, Peter had a sheet come down from the sky, and now we can eat vultures with corpses. Can we get a new verse? I'm tired of seeing those. Let's get some new verses. (laughs) There's only two they use. That's the only two they they really use. Uh, You guys can't use those two. New rules. You can't use those two. Find some other verses. All right, Exodus 5 1. And afterward, Moshe and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of Yashrael, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahuwah, that I may obey his voice to let Yashrael go? I do not know Yahuwah, neither will I let Yashrael go. And they said, The Elohai of the Ivrim has met with us. Now, who is the Ivrim, folks? Uh, Hebrews. Who, who are the Ivrim? Us. Us. Yeah, that's who you want to be. Everybody, we want to be, uh, you, we, we don't know what tribe. I mean, I guess if you, you could say you want to be in a certain tribe. Um, but we want to be Yashrael. We want to be the people of the Most High. So a couple things here is, in Jasher, they weren't allowed just to go up to uh, Pharaoh's palace, right? You, just, you can't just be a nobody and go up there, right? You have to be some, like, something but important, right, in his, in his palace. So he has these two lions, his guards out front, and these things bow down to them. And they're like... And so the guards are like, oh, well, these guys are obviously powerful. Let them in. So they let them yeah, in. Yeah, the, 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 they took the lions in, and they were all frisky and plain, and they just it was yeah. they became like house cats. Yeah, and they, it's like <laughs> they couldn't no one ever seen that. Like everyone, like, these, these things are only like nice to the uh, people that like raise them and stuff, and like they're supposed to be like killers, right? <laughs> yeah, they're like yeah, it's like a pit bull. So times everyone's three. everyone's like looking around, being like, that. these guys have got some power. Let them in. Yeah, I would imagine having a, a couple of pet lions. You'd be like Mike Tyson. That's tiger. Oh, he has tigers, right? Whatever. Anyway, uh, verse verse two uh, or three. Um, yeah, he says, neither will I let Yashrael go. Verse three, or am I at four? Yeah, verse three. <clears throat> and they said, the Elohi of the Ivarim has met with us. Let us go. We pray you three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto Yahuwah Eloheinu, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king Mitzrayim said unto them, wherefore do ye, Moshe and Aaron, let the people... Let the people from their works get you unto your burdens. Get back to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, why would you let your free labor go? That's insane. Okay. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick. And as here to four, let them go and gather straw for themselves. It's like, it wasn't the Egyptians doing nothing. They were still helping them build. They were giving them the materials. But now they're just like, do it yourself. Go do it yourself. Go cut the straw. Go, go process it. Dude, it was just, it's probably like you guys having to go collect grass during dry season. And it, uh, everybody's out there. The straw is a major part of this entire cement process. So without the straw, that's it's even harder. What are they turn straw into cement or brick? It's it's how they they put it in. They They're like they, weave it. It's probably the way to actually make the brick. I assume it's part of the the compost. Like they have this stuff inside the brick, and they put the straw inside of it, and they fire it all up, and it's like I don't know how they That'd do be it. Interesting. I'm sure somebody does out there. Nicole, where am I? At? <clears throat> okay, and the tally of the bricks which they did make here two four. Ye shall lay upon them, ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our Elohim. Keep these fellows keep these busy. They aren't working busy. enough. They're, yeah. they, they have ideas. That's right. Keep them busy. Let, there be mo- let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spoke to the people, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where ye can find it, yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Mitzrayim to grab, gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. And the pharaohs of the children of Yashrael, which Pharaoh's taskmaster had set over them, were beaten and demanded. Wherefore, have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick, both yesterday and today, as here to four? 
Then the officers of the children of Yashrael came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore deal you thus with your servants? And there is no straw given unto your servants. And they say to us, Make break, and behold, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle. Ye are idle. Therefore ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to Yahuwah. Go therefore now and work, for there shall, be, there shall no straw be given you. Yet shall ye deliver the tally of bricks. And the officers of the children of Yashrael did see that they were in evil case. After it was said, ye shall not minish aught from your bricks of your daily task. And they met Moshe and Aaron, who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, Yahuwah look upon you and judge because ye have made our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And Moshe returned unto El Yahuwah and said, Adonai, wherefore have you so evil entreated this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. Okay. So now uh, Aaron and Moses are sitting there going, Huh, we just made things worse. What do we do now? Not only made things worse, but all the people hate him, right? Yeah. And so you have all these people. It, it's, a, it's a bad thing to have the people go against you, right? These, these people. We're trying to save people, them. Who you have to basically But they don't leave. know that, right? They're just getting beaten more. All of a sudden, you know, there's, there's always some kind of superheroes that rise up, and it's like it ends up getting the people hurt or beat or something because the people were not strong enough to make a – are ruling over it, and so these people are, um, they're making a show, and they are, um, they're definitely struggling. Any commands? Anyone? No. No. All right, let's, work. yeah, get to work, <laughs> get to work, slackers. Okay, six, we're in 26 minutes, I think we'll finish this, and then we'll uh, continue on. Then Yahuwah said, Yahuwah said unto El, unto Moshe, now shall you see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And Elohim spoke unto Moshe and said unto him, I am Yahuwah. And I appeared unto El Avram, unto El Yitchak, and unto El Yaakov, by El Shaddai. But by my name Yahuwah was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrims, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Yashrael, whom the Mitzrayim keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Yashrael, I am Yahuwah, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Mitzrayim, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you Elohim. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah Elohekim, which brings you out from under the burdens of the Mitzrayim. For some reason, I have that highlighted, but I mean, that is, a, that is a huge promise. I mean, that is a huge promise to all of you boys out here, all of you family that are out there, that I will be to you Elohim. This is what our, our creator says to us. And how will he be uh, our Elohim? Will he be as we, we we're slopping in these pork chops, worshiping on a Sunday and, and uh, uh, doing what we want to do? I mean, is it what is it? What? How will he be our Elohim? Uh, if we follow his commands. Yeah, if we keep his, if we stay in his will, if we if we do what he wants us to do, he will be. And there's power in that, right? And you have to have the faith to embrace that power and and understand. That we're in a spiritual war of all time right now. Verse eight, and I will bring you into the in unto the land, concerning the which I did swear to give it to Avram, to Yitzchak, and to Yaakov, and I will give it you for a heritage. I am Yahuwah, or say Yahweh. Um, how how what other ways? I uh, Yahweh. Yahweh Yahweh, and um, you know this like the son of of Yahweh Yahuwah. Is Yahushua. Yahushua. I've also heard Yasha. Yahusha. Yahusha and uh, Yeshua. I mean, I and I don't. Somebody asked me the other day, what is the name? And I don't know exactly what it was because I am sure back in the day, the Hebrew dialect, it was probably sounds something very close. I don't believe he would turn around if you said Jesus when he, you know he was a Hebrew man. Um, you're going to be closer to Yasha, Yashu, you know, Yahusha. Jo- Yahusha, like Joshua with Y, Yahusha, Yahusha with yeah. Yeshua, something yeah. to, close to that. So anyway, um, I am Yahuwah. I mean, that's a huge thing. I mean, that is, that is our creator and that is the, the, the name we have to, uh, 
That's the only name. It's his name and his son. And Moshe spoke, verse 9, so unto the children of Yashrael, but they hearkened not unto Moshe for anguish of the Ruach and for cruel bondage. So these people all start fighting Moshe back. Moshe's like, wow, I'm in, I don't know what's going on here. I'm getting smoted. Verse 10, and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, that he let the children of Yashrael go out of his land. And Moshe spoke unto Yahuwah, saying, behold, the children of Yashrael have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who uh, am of uncircumcised lips? And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe and unto El Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Yashrael and unto Ki Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, to bring the children of Yashrael out of the land of Mitzrayim. These be the heads of their father's houses, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Yashrael, Kanuk and Palu, Ketzron, and Kamli. These be the families of Reuben, and the sons of Shimon, Yemiel, Yamin, and Oad, and Yakin, and Zokar, and Shaul, the son of the Ekinanian woman. These are the families of Shimon, and these are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generations, Gershon, Kohath, and Meri, and the years of the life of Levi were 130 and seven years. The sons of Gershon, Leveni, and Shimini, according to their families, and the sons of Kohath, Amran, and Yitshar, and Kevron, and Uziel, and the years of the life of Kohath were 130 and three years. And the sons of Merai, Makali, and Moshe, and these are the families of Leve, according to their generations. And Amram took him Yokeved, his father's sister, to be his woman, and she bore him Aaron and Moshe. And the years of the life of Amran were 130 and seven years. And the sons of Yitzar, Korak and Nepheg and Zerkari, and the sons of Uziel, Mishiel, and Eliatasaphan, and Kithri. I'm not slaughtering these too bad. And Aaron took him Elisheva, daughter of Amiadav, sister of Nokson, to be his woman. And she bore him Nadav, and Amiyahu, and Eleazar, and Ithiumar. And the sons of Korak, Asir, and Elkanah, and Aviakah, these are the families of Koreki. And Eleazar, Aaron's son, took him one of the daughters of Putiel to be his woman, and she bore him Piniak. These are the heads of the fathers of the Levium, according to their families. <clears throat> these are that Aaron and Moshe, to whom Yahuwah said, Bring out the children of Yahashrael from the land of Mitzrayim, according to their armies. These are they which spoke to Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, to bring out the children of Yashrael from Mitzrayim. These, these are that Moshe and Aaron. And it came to pass on the day when Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe in the land of Mitzrayim, that Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, I am Yahuwah. Speak you unto Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, all that I say unto you. And Moshe said before Yahuwah, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? Oh, man. He's, he needs to work his faith a little bit. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, he obviously is uh, what Yah's looking for in, in people. Um, you know, he became the great, he became the superhero of the uh, of the book, right? One of them. Sorry, guys, I probably just made a lot of noise. I'm just trying to put the tablet down so we can finish up out of here. Um, yeah, so any commandments that we have, anything besides I got nothing, nothing 15. There. So we just nailed another three um, of the Torah. And, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because... You know, they, they say the Torah is really hard to follow, and it is something that um, it really doesn't seem hard at all. I mean, yeah. right now we're in two, uh, the second book, yeah. we only have 15, 15 commands. commands. I mean, that just does not seem like um, oppression. It does not seem like bondages. It does not seem like, you know, the ball and chain that we got to be free from. Go make bricks without straw. Yeah, and I mean, I'm about to do a lesson on, on the book of, of James, James 2. And, you know, it, it completely breaks the, the, it completely breaks everything about the Christian religion and it will go the entire, you know, as I'm studying into this, I'm, I'm going back over the doctrines of the Christian religion. It is all about faith and grace, faith and grace, and there's nothing more. And that is contrary to what we're reading right here. And it is, it is completely contrary that and you know it is dangerous because without a set of guidelines and without a set of doctrine that we have right here we wouldn't we would be at a loss for certain things not only would we have unclean food and, and problems in our lives 
we could be doing things that are that are that are bad. When you look at the qualities and the qualifications of Yah, it's all about righteousness, all about holiness. There's no weirdo, kinky, Hasatan stuff, right? Like there's, it's no dirtiness, there's no vileness, there's no darkness, right? It's all about light. It's about treating your neighbor as yourself. It's about, it's about loving God, our, our creator, Elohim, with all our heart, mind, and soul. There's so much more than just faith and grace, faith and grace, and that God loves us so much we don't have to, we don't have to live a, a he just wants to give us, uh, you know, everything. And as much as that he may want to give us everything, he's not going to do that to a group of disobedient people. And so, it is of utmost important that as a family, as all of you guys out there, as all of us here around this table, that we discuss this because it is a commandment to that we do discuss this. Well, far, for, further on in here, um, it is a commandment that we go over the Torah and we, we um, write it up on our hearts, minds, and souls and that you boys and that my family of you guys out there, that we all listen to this and that we are, are in holiness with our creator, that we, are, we understand the path to our creator, that we're not... We're not going to be just raptured without facing tribulation. We are coming into a point of tribulation where if we do not have ourselves equipped with these, with a Torah, we're going to be fighting a spiritual battle with, without swords, without the right swords. And so um, that's all I have to say on this, gentlemen. I, I appreciate everybody who's made it to the end of this. I know a couple of you guys actually do. Thank you guys so much for, for toughing it out with us, hanging with us as a family. We do appreciate your time. And it is truly valuable. Gentlemen, do you have anything else? Uh, read your Bibles and uh, stay in the Torah. Yeah. Stay in the Torah. No need to stay eat holy. a pork chop. It's not healthy for you anyways. Yeah, don't eat, don't eat unclean foods. Just, and don't, uh, don't do evil stuff that Yah doesn't want us to do. So it's all about his, his ways, and they are the right ways. They, are, they will breed goodness and life. Okay. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Bye, everyone.